So, you're having some issues with your hydropower flush valve. Let's take a look at a few possible causes and the corrective action you can take to get your flush valve back in action. The valve does not flush. Press the manual override button. If the valve does not flush, you most likely have a water supply issue. Remove the control stop cover by loosening the set screw on the side. Then, using a flathead screwdriver, open the control stop by turning the screw counterclockwise. Test the manual override button again. If it still does not flush, it's most likely that the main water supply for the building is turned off or has lost pressure. Now that you've made sure water is getting to your flush valve, if automatic flushes still are not taking place as expected, let's take a look at the sensor. If the sensor appears dirty, wipe it with a soft cloth. Hold your hand about 6 inches in front of the sensor lens and watch for a blue LED light. If the blue LED light appears, you should see a sequence of three individual blinks, followed by a quick double blink. Then remove your hand from in front of the sensor. If a flush is triggered, then your valve wasn't flushing earlier because the current calibration distance is set too close for your restroom's ambient light environment. See the Adjusting the Activation Distance section of this guide for instructions on how to recalibrate your flush valve appropriately. If the blue LED light blinks continuously once every 30 seconds, regardless of user presence, the calibration distance is set too long for your restroom's ambient light environment. See the Adjusting the Activation Distance section of this guide for instructions on how to recalibrate your flush valve appropriately. The sensor light is not functioning properly. Your new flush valve comes with standard Hydro-X power for renewable, uninterrupted hydropower with a battery backup. Upon the first install, if the valve does not function and the blue LED light blinks two to three times per second regardless of user presence, the backup batteries are likely missing or installed incorrectly. If the blue LED blinks continuously once every five seconds regardless of user presence, while still operating normally, your flush valve's backup batteries may be low or missing. In either case, locate the two set screws on the sides of the valve head. Turn the set screws counterclockwise until the head can be freely pulled up. Being careful not to disconnect the wire harness, inspect the battery tray for missing batteries or a poor battery connection. If batteries are in place and appear to be connected properly, then the batteries currently installed may be low. Replace the backup batteries and your flush valve should resume normal operation. If the blue LED light does not appear, regardless of user presence or with any regular interval, it's most likely that there's a loose wire harness connection. Open the valve head. Then disconnect and reconnect the wire harness to ensure a good connection. Also, inspect the harness for any damaged wires. If you find damage inside the valve, call Zern Customer Care and our team of experts will assist you. Adjusting the activation distance. Zern automatic flush valves are calibrated in the factory to work well in nearly all restroom lighting environments. However, some restrooms with unusually high or low ambient light may require an additional adjustment for sensor activation distance. To do this, you will need a Zern Magic Magnet. To recalibrate your valve, place a light-colored target at the desired detection range. For a water closet, this is 6 inches from the front of the bowl. Hold your magic magnet up to the right side of the sensor. The blue LED light will light up continuously for 5 seconds and then begin to blink quickly. After 10 single blinks and one double blink, the new detection range has been set. Walk away from the valve and your valve will flush. Test the newly calibrated valve by returning to the same position, waiting 15 seconds and walking away. The valve flushes too little water, too much water, or flushes continuously. First, let's check that the flush valve specification matches the fixture specification for gallons per flush. The valve specification can be found beneath the tailpiece of the valve body. The easiest way to check this is with the front-facing camera of a cell phone. The fixture specification can be found near the spud connection. 
Make sure the control stop is open and adequately set to provide water pressure. The recommended water pressure for a flush valve is 25 to 80 PSI. Too little water pressure can result in a continuous flush or a lower than necessary flush volume. Too much water pressure can result in excessive water use and a noisier flush. If your control stop is set to provide adequate flow to the valve and you're still experiencing issues related to flow, it might be time to replace your diaphragm kit. Replacing your diaphragm kit The diaphragm replacement kit includes a new diaphragm and manifold, along with the tools needed to make the replacement to extend the life of your flush valve. First, turn off the water supply to the flush valve. Using a flathead screwdriver, turn the screw inside the control stop clockwise until it stops turning. Press the mechanical override button to flush any water remaining in the valve. Remove the valve head by rotating the two set screws counterclockwise and lifting the head off of the body. Disconnect both wire harness connectors and set the head aside. Locate the two small flathead screws inside the valve that connect the two halves of the shroud together. Use the magnetic screwdriver provided to remove and lift these screws out of the valve. Loosen the set screws holding the shroud escutcheon in place. While holding the shroud halves together with one hand, rotate the shroud escutcheon as shown and lower it onto the fixture spud. Now both halves of the shroud can be removed, exposing the brass valve body. Use the strap wrench to rotate the locking ring counterclockwise to loosen it. Unscrew the locking ring from the valve body while pulling up on the black battery holder. Then, remove the old diaphragm kit. Remove the manifold stem O-rings using a pair of needle nose pliers and replace them with the new O-rings provided. Then, install the new diaphragm and reinstall the head assembly. The slots in the valve body and the tabs in the manifold will help with proper alignment. Tighten the locking ring back down first to hand tightness, and then an additional half turn with a strap wrench. Make sure that the mechanical override button is on the right side so that the shrouds can be easily reassembled. At this point, turn the water back on using the control stop and press the mechanical override button to check for leaks around the locking ring. Flow should cease after releasing the mechanical override button. Reverse the remainder of this process to reassemble the valve. Make sure that at least one set screw in the shroud escutcheon and both set screws in the head are re-engaged by tightening them clockwise until secure. Well, that just about does it. Please refer to the installation manual for additional troubleshooting and maintenance tips. You'll find a library of other troubleshooting and product videos on our YouTube channel. And of course, you can always reach out to Zern's team of experts for support.